Some nut wants to buy my black craftsman uh, auto choke push mower with bagger. Here in the East Coast around this time of year, the leaves start falling from the trees every day. So when you have a mower with a bagger, it's very high in demand this time of year. Uh, people who usually mulch because they don't have a bag, right? And it's also good for your lawn to put the nutrients back into the soil. The leaves. Nobody likes to rake leaves, so mowers with baggers are very desirable. So I have this listed for $125. I know, it's just a push mower, but I'm telling you, you can get that here. If this was self-propelled, I would ask $150 or $175. Um, but anyway, it's at $125 and the guy was kind of already haggling with me on the um, offer up let go app. He says, do you have any wiggle room on this? I says, yeah, you can have this for $100 if you want, but I'll keep the bag. He's probably thinking to himself, well, that's the only reason why I want it is because it has a bag. So I'm gonna pretty much stick to my guns at 125 up to a point where I think he won't buy it. Then I'll just say, like if he's ready to drive away, right? All right, $100 for the whole thing. Trust me, I just want to get rid of my stuff, you know what I mean? So a hundred bucks is a hundred bucks, you know? It's been sitting in my yard for a couple of weeks. Uh, I fixed it. This was from uh, my friend uh, Mike from Babylon. Uh, I think I sold this to him about a year ago and uh, he overfilled it with oil. He gave it back to me. Anyway, I just gave it an oil change, filled it to the levels. There was some other stuff wrong with it, I don't remember. But it's been sitting here for two weeks. Let's see if it starts. It's an auto show. Are we on the telly? So can you believe it? I actually sold a lawnmower. I haven't sold anything in a while. And uh, by the way, this was not let go and offer up. This was off of Craigslist. He uh, emailed me, I sent him my phone number, he texted me the location, that's how we found each other, whatever. And then, uh, he loved it, he loved the auto choke, he said he's never had a mower that had an auto choke, he always had the prime. So when it just pulled on a first pull like that, he was like, sold! $125, full price, uh, full asking price that is. Uh, anyway, um, post office closes early today at 1 p.m. It's now 12.40. I'm going to go get some stamps for those big orders of dungeon stickers that I just came out with. Um, make sure you guys uh, support the channel by a sticker. Got the new Dunsky stickers as well as the um, big American flag one. So uh, thanks a lot for your support, fellas. People always say that sometimes I'm too impatient, which is true. I honestly cannot stand to stand on lines. So when you saw how long that line was, right, during COVID in an enclosed area like that, it's not worth the risk, man. So I'll get stamps on Monday. <laughs> oh my go. Hey, so I'm back. Uh, I was planning on watching the Oklahoma-Kansas State game, right, on Fox, but it's not in my region. So I turn on the TV, it's some cooking show. What the hell, man? Well, I guess I'm gonna have to get to my video now. Anyway, real fast recap of the history behind this thing. 
So about a year or so ago, I got some free product from uh, Lucas Oil or something, and it was diesel like cetane booster, you know, jugs of it, whatever. So I could never use it because uh, I don't have a diesel. But my boy, Jason Pate of Pate's Performance, go check him out on YouTube. Anyway, he lives about five blocks away. He's a uh, flipper like me, uh, but he's actually a, a real mechanic, which I'm not. And anyway, I've known him for uh, a number of years. Really good guy. He's been in a bunch of my videos. I've been in a bunch of his videos. He's part of my Long Island Renter Squad, you know? Uh, great guy. So uh, one day I went to bring him that, those fluids, see? And he wasn't home. So uh, I decided I'm just gonna go uh, near his backyard, whatever, and hide him behind the bushes, and then see if he watches my video. And sure enough, he watched my video and he goes, oh, <laughs> went out to get it, you know? So he paid me back uh, yesterday. Uh, a number of months ago, he came over, we did a video together, and he mentioned that he wanted to get me a 5,000 subscriber gift. Uh, and I told him, <laughs> It's really not necessary, you know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I thought he was scooting around. But sure enough, yesterday when I went to my mom's house to mow her lawn, my wife called me and says, hey, there's some strange white dude in my yard inside the shed. He's got like a gift wrap package that he's putting in the um, shed. Now I forgot to bring my phone when I took my son and Boba to my mom's house to mow her lawn, right? So I didn't know anything. When I got home from that, I look at my phone in my garage and I said, it, it was a text from Jason who says, hey, are you home? <laughs> so he probably thought nobody was home, right? So he came over and he brought my 5,000 subscriber gift and he thought he'd pay me back by hiding it somewhere into his shed, uh, into my shed, and that I would watch the video later and, and figure out, hey, he put something in my shed. So I took it out yesterday in yesterday's episode and I uh, I unwrapped it. You know, I thought it was a, a, a shelf, a shelving system or a, like another shed or something inside the shed. But man, oh man, he uh, knows that I absolutely love DeWalt and uh, I have a 3 8 DeWalt impact and uh, he knows I hate electrical uh, stuff like electric weed whackers, electric mowers, electric snow blowers, whatever. But um, having uh, hand tools such as the impact wrench and this thing, this actually might be my first quality um, cordless electric weed whacker. So thank you very much, Jason, for thinking of me and really not necessary, you know? We're friends and stuff and we're boys, so no presents are really necessary. But uh, I really appreciate it though, thank you very much. Um, very kind and generous of you. So now I'm gonna do an unboxing of this DeWalt electric weed whacker. The model is DCST922P1. Do you think you could have enough model numbers to that? I mean, that's a mouthful, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a 14 inch, right? Five amp folding screen trimmer. 200 plus products and growing, it says. 20 volts max lithium ion. Wow, so it comes with a battery? Awesome. Because those batteries are like 60 bucks as it is, especially the 20 volt kind, you know? So I'm just going to open the top here. And I'll whip this stuff out with you guys watching. Ooh. Now I wonder if I could use my existing eight, uh, six, 12 volt. I have an existing, um, I have 12 volt batteries for my 3 8 impact. Wow, so this comes with a big 12 volt 5 amp battery. Let me go see if this fits my impact. So I've got a 12 volt brushless DeWalt impact wrench. It's a 3 8 drive. I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. And that's the reason why I bought a DeWalt was because I actually have a corded electric DeWalt drill that's always been fantastic. I bought it when I built my deck in the back a few years back and it's flawless, you know what I mean? It was cheap too. I don't, I don't remember what I paid, but it was like 20, 30 bucks, something like that, it was cheap. Uh, so when I had my Black & Decker quarter inch drive impact wrench, 
it was great, but I could use a, a three fourths, uh, I'm sorry, a three eighths, which is why I got the DeWalt. It's so small, it's brushless, it's been flawless. Came with two batteries and a charger and a bag, and I think it only cost me $99. I thought that was a pretty good deal. Brushless too. Anyway, so let's see if this battery, the, the big 20 volt one that came with this um, gift fits it. It doesn't fit, see? It's a, it's a bigger battery with a wider thing. So I won't be able to use the 20. 20 will probably fry this anyway, unless this is regulated, you know what I mean? But, uh, okay, so look, it comes with its own charger. Pack charging, pack charge, hot cold delay has uh, three indicator lights, I guess. Here's the handle assembly. It looks like it just, there's the instruction manual. Get out of here, we don't need no freaking instructions. I guess it just uh, folds like this. Henry, if you use the instructions, you might know what to do. Oh, there we go. We don't need any instructions. There you go. Snaps into place. It's uh, portable. You can fold it into a small little package and take it anywhere you want. You know what I mean? So uh, it's got the head on here. And I guess I'm gonna shove in this battery. I know the battery's not charged. Let's shove in the battery and see if it works. I'm, I haven't charged it, so. I guess this is uh, okay, low and high. This might be a safety trigger. Ooh, works. So you gotta use your thumb, touch the safety trigger, and then you got the trigger here. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. I'm not gonna lie. I'm also not gonna lie, it's kind of heavy. Like the head, it's kind of heavy to hold. But um, very heavy duty. Seems very strong too. Take this battery back out again. I want to see how. Push this down. I want to see how much juice it's got. It's got a little button here where you can see exactly how much um, juice you got left. Okay, so it's a one bar. See, so I have to go ahead and charge this. So I'm gonna put this there. and we got the handle here. I wonder where you put the handle. I'd have to take this part off to get this black thing off to get the handle. I guess I should put the handle where I think it's uh, most comfortable. I would say it's probably around here. So let me get some Allen keys to loosen this up so I can put the handle. So this is a four millimeter PEX tool, right? And you just loosen these four right here. <sighs> I'm thinking, I'm looking at the picture and it looks like that this handle goes before the, the stowing pivot, you know? So I think it goes this way. But then looking at the picture, that handle looks like it's pointed leaning forward more like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna! <laughs> Okay, so I put the handle on. This part here is rubberized. Feels really good. <laughs> the front is a little heavy, I will tell you that. So here's the front of the head. I don't understand what brushless means. Does that mean like the motor, when it's spinning, has no brushes to make contact? then how does it work? You know what I mean? This looks like one of those easy, fast speed type um, 
Maybe I shouldn't peel this off until I put the color on. So here's another uh, package. And this is the deflector. Oh, look. Had I read the instructions, I probably would have known that they give you a four millimeter Allen key. That's okay, I wanna use my own. Protect you from cutting your hand. Henry, why don't you read the instructions? I don't need any damn instructions, man. It's like a Lego set. When you were a kid, did you read the instructions how to do the Legos? <laughs> Some of you guys are like, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, I did too, I think. But I'm older now. I don't need to do the instructions. Not to mention the fact that I'm impatient, remember? So I only have one screw here. I think I'm missing a screw. <laughs> I am missing a few screws, I will tell you that. So let me go find another screw and take the battery charger and plug it into my garage. Charge the battery a bit before uh, I give this a try on real live grass. So I've been looking for a screw that matches closely to the one that I'm missing. I found this one. It's a little shorter. But it looks like it's the same thread count and width. Ah, it's only for a plastic thing. What's the big deal, right? The big deal, I guess, is if it doesn't fit. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll use the longer one for this one. And, you know, honestly, one will hold it in. You know what I mean? Hey, see? One is good enough. But just to make myself more thorough, I'll shove this one in and see if it fits. Does it fit? Make it fit. Yeah, it fits just fine. There you go. Now the string. String is always tricky. You know what I'm saying? But I think this, it appears to look like one of those easy feeds. You know what I mean by easy feed, right? You like take a long string, you shove it in and it goes all the way in and then you turn it or you, wait, you shove it in midway, right? Even length on each side, and you just turn this while holding this, and you coil it in. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, there it is right there, fellers. It wasn't that hard to put together. Uh, very easy to put in the plastic shroud that protects your feet from it getting mangled from the string. 20 volt. XR brushless. This is very nice. It's brushed aluminum. It's solid. You know what I mean? And it's, uh, like I said, it's... How do I do this? Okay, you push this down. Lift that up. This comes out like that, like a clamp. And then this folds so it's portable. So I can take this wherever I need to go. It's very cool. It's like having another hand tool, you know? So um, I was watching Jason's video on him hiding it in my shed. It was very humorous. And Jason, thank you very much. It was a very good video. Um, you mentioned that about my mom, and uh, it's true. I have an entire setup over at her house. Lawn tractor, backup push mower. It's a lawn boy, self, rear self-propelled with a bagger has a Kohler XT675 uh, engine on it. It's very nice, always fires up. I got a track snowblower in there too. Uh, I've got an old weed whacker, like you said, my, my old weed, weeder, uh, weed eater 25cc. I think I bought it for like $99 like, and I mean it, like 25 years ago and it still runs. I've never changed the, um, I've never cleaned the carburetor. I think I might have changed a fuel line once, but that's it. And that thing still runs today. I use it every weekend when I go there. Uh, nowadays with COVID, I go there every other uh, Friday because, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, my mom's 75, whatever, you know, and uh, she has like uh, some diabetes, high blood pressure. I'd, I, I'm fine, but what if I'm 
uh, immune to it? What if I have antibodies, but yet I'm carrying it? You know what I'm saying? So I, I try not to see my mom or at least too close when I see her, but uh, we go there and mow the lawn every other week. But this is very nice. Uh, the battery is now charging. And uh, after I finish charging the battery, I'm gonna take this for a rip, tater chip. While I'm waiting for the battery to charge, I wanna try this gasket that I, it's a aftermarket cardboard gasket, you know, not the original OEM one, which is more rubberized, which is why it probably works much better than the thick uh, cardboard kind. I put a little layer of RTV blue silicone on here just to give it that rubberized feel. Uh, maybe it'll seal the, um, the channel here with the lip a little bit better. And I'm gonna install it and see if it primes. As you know from uh, yesterday's episode, I, um, I got this thing going. You know, um, it needed a blade and a blade adapter and the crankshaft was a little bent so I whacked it with a thing and it seems to be pretty good now. Um, I need to do an oil change on this if it runs. If not, I'll we'll probably try to put another engine on it because I spent a lot of time already on trying to get this to prime and it won't prime. That is actually the second carburetor too. I actually took another spare carburetor, put it on there. It's exactly the same. It's this apparatus here which is preventing it from priming. I tried two covers too, you know, but this original one seems to be in better shape than the one that I tried it. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna install this. I'm just gonna put the cover on and the gasket and see if it starts up. I just put back, put the cover back on because I think when you have the filter covering the hole, right? If you have a lot of wind blowing, whatever, uh, it actually, if you prime it, the fuel fumes will at least go in and not out. So it helps it to start when you have the filter covering the hole, you know? So it's an auto, uh, I, I just primed it three, four times. It starts, you know, not the best start in the world, but it starts, you know. I'm gonna put that shroud back together again, and I'm gonna take the spark plug out and check it out, because it, you could tell that while it's smooth at some times, it kind of hesitates. It goes eh, 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 almost like it's intermittent spark, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna go check out the spark plug and see if it's all gooey and gummy and whatever, and I'll do an oil change on it, you know? It's only 20 ounces. cleaned up as you saw gave it an oil change and I switched out a uh, spark plug uh, when I took the old spark plug out the gap was a little bit too high so I got another spark plug same one uh, RJ 19 LM put it in there no longer hesitates it's unbelievable so it, it mowed very well actually and it starts up now no problem you know uh, shined it up a little bit uh, took some pictures so I could just list it for like $85 $100 whatever no bag or push mower you know 
and I actually mowed this section of my thing just to get rid of the leaves. It actually mows pretty good. So I'll list that. As soon as I come out of the backyard after putting it away under my tent, my uh, across the street neighbor, Darren, comes rolling this over. It's his old one. He got a new one. He says that uh, this thing runs just fine. Do whatever I want with it. And I said, are you sure? So I tried starting it, it doesn't start. Uh, it's an auto show. Probably do a carb clean tomorrow, whatever, and shine it up a little bit. And list this one for like one, I'm 35, you know, it's in good shape. It's got nice wheels. It is a push mower, but it's got a bagger. You know what I mean? So 135, 125, kind of like the same deal I did today, you know? So uh, thank you, Darren. It's like, you know, I never run out of things to do. You know what I mean? So I couldn't wait anymore. It's been like an hour and a half. I've been charging this thing, it's still charging, you know? So it probably needs an overnight or something like that. But uh, I'm just gonna pop in whatever I got going here and give it a try. So it's in, this is all installed, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna have it on the high throttle here. Strong. Here, let's try this. Right along the fence over here. Let's give that a try, huh? Yeah? about it listen fellas I never liked I never liked electric weed whackers right this is really my first good quality one you know what I mean and honestly it does a great job I know I mentioned that it's very heavy right but actually when you have it like this it's very well balanced when you have the battery in there now and this is right here in the middle the balance is very good so it doesn't seem like it's very heavy and it all seems like it floats too you know what I mean very nice I will say having an electric weed whacker you never have to worry about carb cleans or fuel lines going bad leaking gas mixing oil in the gas you know what I mean so you never have to worry about that hmm I might be turning over a whole new leaf. No, I'm not gonna turn over a whole new leaf. I'm never gonna start doing electric stuff, but this is indeed a very good trimmer and I'm going to use this. Uh, I haven't decided whether or not I wanna keep it for myself, bring it over to my mom's place and use it over there. I have a pretty good Echo uh, GT200B. That thing's great, but I don't know. This is pretty nice too. Big shout out to Jason over at Pate's Performance. Go check him out on YouTube. Thank you very much, Jason and the missus, for the gift. Really wasn't necessary, but I'll use it, and every time I use it, I'll think of you both. Thank you very much. That's my review of the DeWalt Electric 20 Volt Brushless Weed Trimmer. Present from Jason over at Pate's Performance. Thanks a lot for following me along on this review. 
We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Mowers.